we had uh, discussed that there are many white box testing techniques, but we need to discuss one important concept that uh, whether we need to test all of these different testing techniques, whether we need to do testing using all these half a dozen or a dozen testing techniques. For that we must understand the concept of a stronger testing and a weaker testing. The idea here is that different testing techniques they cover certain program elements. A stronger testing covers all the elements that have been covered by a weaker testing. That means, if we are doing a stronger testing, all the program elements that have been executed by a stronger testing includes the weaker testing or in other words, if we are doing a stronger testing, weaker testing is not necessary. We need not again design test cases for weaker testing. As long as we do a stronger testing, weaker testing need not be done, it is ensured automatically by a stronger testing. It may be possible that two white box test strategies are complementary, that is they execute some program elements which are common strategy 1, test strategy 1, it executes elements some of which are overlapping with strategy 2. If two test strategies are complementary, then we need to conduct testing using both strategies. If we represent the stronger, weaker and complementary, we can see that the test strategy which is covered by the green all the elements here by the green strategy they cover the weaker strategy which is given in pink. Therefore, as long as we are doing the testing for the blue coverage we need not do the weaker testing, but see here this is a complementary test strategy which executes some elements here for the other strategy, but it also executes additional elements and therefore, we need to do testing with both these strategies, we only can eliminate the weaker strategy. Now, based on the basic concepts that we discussed, now let us look at the different uh, white box testing strategies. The simplest strategy is statement coverage. The idea here is that we need to execute every statement in the program at least once. We just look at the source code and design test cases such that every statement is executed at least once. The principal idea behind this technique is that if some statements are not executed, we never know if there is a bug in that and that is the reason why we want every statement to be executed by the test cases such that if there is a bug in that test case, it will probably get expressed when we execute that test cases. But we must also understand that uh, the statement coverage criterion has uh, deficiency, because just by executing a test case once is no guarantee that all the bugs have been expressed, but then it is better than not executing all statements. So, we must ensure that all statements are at least executed once, but what we are trying to say here 
that uh, just statement coverage may not be enough. Uh, we might achieve statement coverage, but then it may not guarantee that good number of bugs, majority of the bugs have been exposed, because just by executing each statement once, uh, we may not be exposing the bugs present in that statement. Now, let us see how the statement coverage is computed. Here, we count the total number of statements in the program and we track how many statements are executed by the test cases. So, the percentage of executed statements by the total number of statements that gives us what is the coverage achieved. If we have 500 is the total number of statements and we have executed let us say 100 statements by the test cases, we have achieved only 20 percent statement coverage. This is a very simple strategy, but then it is one of the basic strategies and the other strategies that we will see they will achieve a more stronger testing than statement coverage. Let us discuss those techniques. Okay, before that, let us uh, take an example. We have this code here, simple code. While x is not equal to y, if x greater than y, then x equal to x minus y else y equal to y minus x. If you remember, this is the GCD computation, Euler's GCD computation code and we want to see what are the input values for which uh, statement coverage will be achieved. There is a decision here, only if x is greater than y then x this statement will get executed and if x is not equal to y this statement will get executed and this will be executed only if x is not equal to y. If we test it with x equal to y then all these will not be tested. So, first we need to check whether x is not equal to y and then we must have x greater than y and x less than y. So, this is the Euclid's GCD algorithm and uh, we know the specific values for which uh, statement coverage will be achieved. But then given a large enough program, it is very hard to identify what are the specific values for which the statement coverage is achieved and fortunately for white box testing, we do not really design test cases by looking at the specific values and see what will execute which one and so on. We have software to measure coverage, statement coverage let us say and then we just keep on giving values to the test cases to the software and then the coverage tool will tell how much cover is achieved, we keep on testing until we achieve sufficient coverage. Now, for this specific example, the Euclid's GCD program, if we choose these are the different values, then statement cover is achieved and as I was saying that in reality for large programs we do not have to identify the values for which statement coverage is achieved, but to understand the concept what is statement coverage may be for a small program we might have to identify values such that statement coverage is achieved or given a some values 
or test cases, we should be able to tell that whether statement coverage will be achieved. The next white box strategy that we will discuss is the branch coverage. Another name for branch coverage is decision coverage. The main idea here is that in every program there are many decision statements. The decision statements can be of the form if some condition execute some statement else execute some statement or it may be while something keep doing something or it may be for and so on. These are examples of decision statements and here the idea in branch or decision coverage is that every decision statement here they must be taking true and false values. So, it should at least the test cases ensure that it goes inside the loop and also it exits the loop. Similarly, for if both these take place that is the condition is true and false and similarly, the for the for it should enter into the loop and also for some test input it should not enter into the loop. So, every condition in a conditional statement every branch condition must take true and false values that is our test cases should ensure that. Now, if we look at the same function here the Euclid's GCD algorithm we find that the decision statements are here and here. There are two decision statements and our test cases must make this ones true make this ones false and similarly this should be true and false and for very small programs we can design the branch coverage test cases, but in normal practical situation we do not have to design the test cases branch coverage test cases. We just keep on giving input and the coverage tool will tell us what is the extent of branch coverage that is achieved and we keep on giving data until we get sufficient branch coverage. So, for that simple program Euclid's GCD, we can design some test cases which will achieve the branch coverage. But how do we measure coverage if we are giving executing the program using test cases, how does the coverage tool that will report the extent of coverage achieved? it will find out all the possible branches that are there on the code number of branches and how many branches have been executed. If it is a while condition then there are two branches one branch is that it is true it enters into the loop and false exits. Similarly, every condition conditional statement must ach achieve true and false values during the execution of the test cases. So, each of these will be computed to here. If we have n decision statements then the number of branches will be 2 into n and then the coverage tool can find out how many of these branches true and false are taken and then it will report the extent of branch coverage achieved. But then 
one thing we must be clear is that uh, which is a stronger testing is branch coverage or statement coverage because if we can say that which is stronger testing we need not do the other testing but then if we say that something is stronger we must be able to show that it is stronger testing now here between branch coverage and statement coverage we can say that branch coverage is stronger than statement coverage because every statement must be there on some branch. So, that is our argument here that if there is a statement in a program it must be there on some branch and therefore, if we are covering the branches then all statements must have been covered. So, branch coverage ensures statement coverage, but then the question comes that is it possible that <coughs> branch coverage ensures statement coverage, but is it possible that branch coverage guarantees statement coverage that we could show now but we have to also show that uh, there are some branches which are not ensured by statement coverage otherwise they will become identical to show that it is stronger we have to show not only that branch coverage ensures statement coverage but we have to also show that statement coverage does not ensure branch coverage or in other words there are some branches which may not get executed even though we achieve statement coverage. How do we show that? One way we could show that branch coverage guarantees statement coverage because every statement must lie on some branch. So, a stronger testing as we said is a superset of weaker testing if we are doing stronger testing we need not do the weaker testing if we are doing the branch testing we need not do the statement coverage testing, but then so far we have showed that state uh, branch coverage ensures statement coverage, but we have to also show that statement coverage does not achieve branch coverage. Okay, so, let me just uh, give one example here that will ensure that uh, statement coverage does not achieve branch coverage. Let us say we have uh, a statement if C 1 then A is equal to B. Now, let us say that uh, C 1 is true, then we achieve the branch coverage here sorry the statement coverage C 1 is equal to true achieves st statement coverage, but it does not achieve branch coverage because uh, C 1 is false has not been ensured. So, just achieving statement coverage on this code is not ensuring branch coverage on the code. So, this is a simple example which says that branch coverage does not ensure statement coverage. There are many coverage tools and coverage tool as the test case are executed it uh, displays coverage report. In the coverage report it displays that what are the statement coverage, branch coverage etcetera achieved for different functions. 
and also many tools that display what are the statement that have still not got executed. So, these are shown in the red and we know that statement coverage has not been achieved and these are the statements that have not been executed so far. So, we have seen that branch coverage is stronger testing, a branch coverage achieves statement coverage, but the converse is not true. The statement coverage, if we achieve statement coverage that does not mean that branch coverage has been achieved. Now, so far we have looked at the statement coverage and branch coverage. But is uh, branch coverage is a good enough testing? Can it miss some bugs? That is, we achieve branch coverage, but then some types of bugs are not exposed. And this is what we are going to discuss now that we have a certain branch condition. If digit is high, if digit high is 1 or digit low is minus 1, then do some action A. Now, the problem here is that we achieve okay, uh, if digit high is uh, 1 or digit low is minus 1, then the action is A, else action is a 1 and so on. Now, let us say we achieve branch coverage here that we have this branch condition is true. So, A is executed branch condition is false and then A 1 is executed, but then just observe here that to get this true we might have uh, digit high equal to 1 that will make it true irrespective of digit low is minus 1. And let us say we have digit high is 0 and digit low is not minus 1. and then this becomes false. So, we have achieved both high uh, both true and false for this specific branch, but then let us say that we have uh, some action here where the uh, which will encounter a failure only when digit low is minus 1. In that case we will not be able to discover that bug by testing and therefore, not only that we must ensure that the decision is both true and false, we must ensure that all component conditions here or clauses are true and false. So, branch coverage even though it is a strong testing but then it may not achieve, uh, it may not expose many types of bugs and we might have to do a stronger testing and a stronger testing each component clause in the decision statement must achieve both true and false values. And that brings us to the basic condition coverage. In the basic condition coverage, each component condition must achieve true and false values. So, if we have if if A or B, then A must be true and false the test cases must ensure that A takes true and false values, B also takes true and false values. In the basic condition coverage, we must ensure that the 
component clauses here on the decision statement take true and false values. So, each component of a composite conditional expression must take true and false values. Let us consider the example if a greater than 10 and b less than 50. Now, if a equal to 15 and b equal to 30, so a is 15, this becomes true and b is 30, this becomes true. Now, for the other test case a equal to 5, b equal to 60, a is 5, 5 less greater than 10 is false and b is 60, 60 less than 50 is false. So, these two test cases ensure that both the component clauses ensure achieve the true and false values and if there is any expression in including dozens of clauses, it is possible that only two test cases may be able to achieve basic condition coverage, because one test case may give all true and another test case may assign false to every condition. And therefore, it is possible that in some large decision statement consisting of many clauses, just two test cases may be able to achieve basic condition testing. And that gives us a hint that uh, this uh, may not be a very strong coverage criterion, but then does it ensure if we achieve basic condition testing, does it ensure branch coverage? We need to answer that question is the basic condition testing a stronger testing than the decision coverage or branch coverage or is it a weaker testing or is it a complementary testing. Uh, now, we are almost at the end of the lecture, we will discuss this point and the other white box testing strategies in the next lecture. Thank you.